Hey friends, welcome back to The Daily Dose. We're kicking it off with day number 25 today. Our scripture reading is going to be Exodus 25 through 27, as well as Psalm number 25. Thank you guys so much for being here and joining me. I appreciate it. It's encouraging to see you guys commenting on the videos, liking the videos, and engaging with the videos. So thank you very much. Today, we do not have any um, supplementary videos from our folks at the Bible Project. So it's just going to be this video along with our verses and chapters that we got for today. If you need to get a copy of the PDF reading plan, you can find a link to it down below in the description. And what we're going to be kicking off with in this section of scripture is um, the, the tabernacle and all of the things that are going to be inside of it and how they get constructed and um, and how God kind of just gives this, some very specific instructions on how these things are to be made. Um, so we start off by collecting an offering for the tabernacle. So Moses is supposed to go around and collect from the people um, an offering so that they can have supplies to use in making the tabernacle. Um, if you'll remember, when the Israelites left Egypt, right before the Exodus, they were to go around to all of their neighbors, the Egyptians, and they were supposed to basically get gold, silver, um, precious metals, uh, materials, things of that nature. They were told to do that, to collect uh, spoil, so to speak, before they left on their exodus. Now that they've made it through the Red Sea, um, they, they've made it out into the wilderness, now we're going to kind of see why they were told to take some of these materials from their neighbors and from the Egyptians, because now they're going to come into play. So uh, they, they collect an offering for the tabernacle. People give gold and silver and all kinds of different things. And then we get right into instructions for specific bits and pieces of the tabernacle. Um, first, we look at the design for the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark is going to be... It, the word used for ark is the same word that was used for um, for the coffin when they were talking about um, previously when Joseph got you know got buried according to the Egyptian customs and whatnot. So it's it's essentially just kind of like a box, and inside of this box, we are going to see that that's where God prescribes for the stone tablets of the law, the Ten Commandments, to be stored. Um, Aaron's rod is also going to be stored in here, and also a jar, a sealed jar of manna is going to be stored in here. Um, after the Ark of the Covenant, we look at the instructions for the showbread table, uh, as well as the lampstand, and continuing on, more specific instructions for the tabernacle itself, the altar of burnt offerings, um, the courtyard in the temple, and instructions for even the lamp oil. As far as points of interest go, something that that kind of jumped out at me as I was reading through this section is how specific these instructions are. Um, God didn't just leave it up to them to, you know, he didn't say, hey, I need you to create a lamp, use your best judgment and create a lamp, and then we need a stand for the lamp to go on, so, you know, get some materials, some wood, whatever, build a stand for it to go on. He was extremely specific and laid everything out exactly you know almost like an architect would when they're designing a building he gave them very specific uh, instructions specific measurements very specific everything around how this is to be constructed um, and he also gives very specific instructions for the priests on how they are allowed to approach him um, they can't just come in anytime they want into the tabernacle uh, and not just anybody can go in there. there. There are rules and stipulations that God sets in place, right? Um, and the way that this speaks to me, if I try to look at this through the eyes of Jesus, um, from a New Testament perspective, the way this speaks to me is that in the New Covenant that we're in, you know, this was under the law, under the Old Covenant, under the New Covenant that we're in, um, God does a very similar thing, um, and I don't mean that he 
specifically prescribes how we're supposed to build our places of worship, how we're supposed to build our church buildings. You know, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, What I'm talking about is that he is very specific and very precise in the way that we are to approach him, right? So in the Old Testament, he was very specific about his dwelling place among the people and about how he could be approached. In the New Testament, we see that um, that we can't just approach God all willy-nilly any way that we want to. Um, not at all. He gives us very, very explicit instructions. And if we look at John uh, chapter 14, verse 6, it says, and this is in regards to Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We see that Jesus is not a way. He's not one of many ways. Um, he is the way, the only way. And and this is this is very exclusive. It, it's extremely exclusive. And it's one of uh, the more potentially shocking things that, that we can read in the Bible is that Jesus is not saying that, you know, well, all religions are okay and it doesn't really matter which religion you follow they will all ultimately lead you to the same place. Um, I call that Oprah theology because so often, if you've ever watched any of Oprah's shows that involve spirituality, that's kind of the um, the mentality that she seems to take. Take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. You know, it all leads to the same place. That is not true, friends. Not true at all. Um, that couldn't be farther from the truth. The truth is that God has prescribed a very specific and very exclusive way for us to be able to approach him. And that way is Jesus. There is no other way. So I am so thankful and encouraged that we have the New Testament to tell us about Jesus and that he sends the Holy Spirit to us when we become believers. So if you are not a follower of Jesus, and that's basically what a Christian is. When you hear the term Christian, um, that basically implies um, little Jesus is running around. You know, little Christians, little followers of Jesus. If you're not a Christian, friends, I invite you to become one today, right? Because we've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. It is what it is. And we have no hope apart from the help that God provided for us by means of Jesus' death and atonement on the cross. If you will turn from your sins, acknowledge your sins, confess your sins to the Lord, Ask for his forgiveness and invite him into your heart. If you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. So I encourage you to do that today if you have not done that yet. If you do happen to do that today, please feel free to drop a comment below to let me know you did. Um, But that's all I got for today. I'll see you guys again tomorrow with our next episode of The Daily Dose. So until we meet again, deuces.